Hi, welcome to this series of tutorials on uh, Protractor. So today we'll get started with uh, Protractor and uh, try getting some hands-on programs uh, with Protractor with uh, Angular JS applications as well as uh, uh, web applications which are written without uh, Angular JS. So without much delay, let us try understanding what Protractor does is. So let us consider a simple scenario where we have uh, uh, various uh, applications which are running it. So I would just uh, like say the application is called as web application one, web application two, web application three, and so on up to web application n. So eventually the whole idea of having protractor is to do something called as end-to-end uh, -end, uh, testing, right? Now there are a lot of other tools in the market who helps us to do unit testing, somebody like Jasmine, Mocha, QNet, and other people. The whole idea of having protractor is to test the web application itself. So we go with end-to-end -end application. Now, when it comes to protractor, you start writing various test cases. Internally, uh, Protractor tries using something called as uh, Jasmine. So they use Jasmine internally to write every test case. So if you have little uh, hold on the Jasmine, you could continue along. If not, you can Google or check some video tutorials on YouTube. Now, when I say Jasmine, they go with a very simple syntax where they have a suite and they have a test case in it. Now, eventually what happens, I have so many web applications which has to be tested. So I give it to you Jasmine. What my Jasmine does is it start testing it. So a very simple understanding of uh, Jasmine is something like this, where I have a describe and uh, which have a test suit and I'll have a function. My function, what it does, it can have various uh, tests in it. So each of the tests will have a string. I'll say my test, and that has a function. So that's uh, something where we go ahead and write about through this. That's a whole idea. So now, what my protractor intelligently does is it tries taking a describe and int and in the it, I can have various uh, assets. And more, one of the well-known assets when it comes to Jasmine is called as uh, exec, right? Um, expect, expect. So what my expect does, it either returns you true or false, depending on the condition satisfied. Now, over a course of time, I can have each of this uh, uh, it return multiple times. So let us consider this. I have a suite, I can have multiple test cases. Now just uh, for our understanding, I would just consider I have a describe block and each of this describe block is associated with a web application. So let us call this as test case one, test case two, three, and so on. So eventually I have to go ahead and start executing it. On the verge of executing it, I have to have uh, either one file executing or some multiple files executing so I can have a file which is uh, basically a configuration file which is a JavaScript file which is uh, containing JSON data which uh, gives all the information about uh, uh, my workflow as to know how many files has to be picked or what kind of files has to be picked or where the files are what browser to be used and uh, so on now, most of the times when people try writing these files, they call these files as you know, file name dot spec dot js. That's a whole idea. So what my we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the test case written in the JavaScript file for each at a web application or multiple web application, and I'm gonna have uh, a conf dot js which will give us the information as executing. A typical protractor execution will be something like this protractor with the file name which uh, we have written, which is con.js. Again, this con.js can come from any part from your system. 
So let's get started without much delay. I just want to go back to there. So let's go to uh, internet and uh, try looking into some documentation. I use google.com to load the page. So here, uh, let's look for a protractor test. So the protractor test.org is uh, the official website, which gives us uh, uh, a very basic and good documentation of protractor. Let's get started. So protractor is basically an end-to-end -end, uh, testing tool for Angular. Now, the whole story of protractor started with Angular, but eventually uh, protractor now supports for even non-Angular applications. Setting up protractor is pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll go ahead and try using NPM to do it. Just make sure that uh, you have Node.js installed uh, prior to using NPM. So what we're gonna do is, uh, let's go back to uh, Windows Explorer on the C drive. I try creating a folder here, which is uh, called as uh, protractor uh, works. So that's where we want to keep all of our files. And uh, I try using an ID, and you are free to use any of the ID of your choice, like uh, Visual Code or Sublime, Webstrom, Atom, Brackets, etc. In my case, I'll be using Visual Code. So let's load the uh, Visual Code out there and open the folder, which is uh, called as Protractor Works. Let me right click, copy this path, and go back here. Uh, I'll open the folder. The folder is uh, protractor, right? So I'll select the folder. So as of now, it's an empty folder. The good thing about uh, Visual Studio Code is it gives an internal um, uh, editor, um, sorry, a terminal, which can help us to invoke the command line uh, the commands right here. Uh, uh, in order to do that, go to view and look for integrated terminal here. So this guy will open the integrated terminal uh, here. Again, you got to, it, it's left to you whether you want to make this as a node project or not. I just keep myself uh, clean so that I have a file which is called as package.json where uh, in case if I want some dependencies, I can record it here. If not, you're free to skip this step. So I would say npm init. So npm init will initiate the npm project. So let's call this as protractor works. And the version I'm good with this description protractor, protractor works. And entry point is good. Test command. I just want to skip all the things and get the uh json file this is one of the basic files which you can generate from in minute and i'm good with this and say yes i should find a file which is called as package.json where all the uh, dependencies are recorded here eventually so now it's uh, time to go back and get into protractor so protractor if you look at the home page of uh, protractor test.org they have made it very clean so when you're getting started with protractor you just go through this so setting up, I'm gonna use uh, npm install minus g. Minus g is uh, uh, basically for global. So let's go back and put in the integrated terminal out there and say enter. So this will install uh, Protractor globally. <laughs> All right. So we have got a protractor installed. So let's go back and get some dependencies. Now internally, we have to know that protractor uses Selenium. So you got to make sure all the dependencies from the Selenium are got. So here is a quick line where you can go through. Uh, the web driver manager is a helper tool to easily get an instance of uh, Selenium server running. In order to get that, we're gonna run the command called as a web driver manager update so i'm going to copy this go back paste it here
so here it says uh, the selenium is all up in there it gets uh, the drivers and it has got unzipped and things are all set it is as easy as it now in order to run it needs a internal server to work with so what we do is we have a web driver manager where we can start the server so this command will start the selenium server to be up in there so uh, it, it's left to you either you can do it here creating a partial uh, new terminal or you could go back to the terminal as in here so i can come here and type cmd here and start so i have a server which is up in there listening any time the selenium server is up and it is running successfully let us go back uh, to this place and check uh, to write a test case so we are just following following along with the diagram what we have got we want a web application or a test one to be written test two test three and so on now eventually we got to have two files to start with one is uh, the actual test case itself plus the con.js so now getting this is very easy going to the protractors official site so writing a hello world test is uh, here so if you just consider here they try having uh, browser.get command which will open angularjs.org which is the official site let me open this and uh, uh, paste it here and this guy what he does is he loads uh, angularjs application so if you just scroll down there are some sample works which is uh, visible there it says that you can enter the name uh, let's consider somebody called Harry. When I say Harry, he, the output generated is uh, hello, uh, the name which you have entered in the text box. Now, the whole idea here is uh, to have uh, uh, the two way data binding. So, what they do is instead of having input type as uh, uh, text with the name, they have something called as ng model. So, if you just hover on the ng model, it says that. Uh, this is basically a link. This means that any changes to the control update data in your model and When you change the model, it also updates the binding part of it The binding part in angular is basically written with two curly braces. So in a nutshell it is uh, uh, Said that you have uh, ng model as your name to be written with input type as text The same is displayed here. It is as simple as it. that's one of the applications which they have it on the home screen of angularjs.r and uh, they also have a simple tool application as you can see that here i can say uh, something like hello uh, how blah 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 things and so on i can have a check 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 which says that the job is done and i can go back and uncheck the job is undone so here if i try taking this input type it says that uh, add new to do here let's right click and inspect the element and check uh, what does it say now it says that input type uh, there's some class associated and input type is text there's a placeholder oh it does not say name rather it says uh, ng model the name of that model is called to do list dot to do text and you also have a button which is called as add so when i do add uh, I'll say testing and click on add it just adds it now my protractor home screen has a very simple app to have it it has got a describe uh, it has got a string out there and the callback function and I can have one test case or multiple test case just to start with we have one test case out there the browser.get command will load angularjs.org as in a web page then i can find element by various ways so people coming from selenium you can easily relate uh, uh, you can get it by id or name css and things and so on you have pretty much everything with protractor plus you can even get it by model so the model is to do list uh, the to do text and we are, we are trying to send some text out there and click on the add button where we are getting the data with the help of we are identifying the element with the help of CSS. And we get all the elements out there and we can loop through that. You see this is a new function. We don't have it in Selenium, which is a repeater. 
and repeater will check if the count is three and uh, it, it just does some expect job. So without much delay, let's go back and try getting this code. I'll copy this. Let's go back uh, to our visual code. We're gonna create a new file out there. Let's call this file as uh, uh, first test hyphen spec dot js. So I'm gonna paste this here. So it's our first file. And uh, we have the configuration file. The configuration file name, it's absolutely left to you. You could choose the file name as what you want. I'll keep as default as what is there in the website called conf.js. Let me just go back, right click, copy, and create a new file, which is called as conf.js. Uh, I'll paste it. Now this file eventually has to be changed. So in our case, we don't have the spec file called as to do spec.js, rather it is called as a, a first test spec.js. Let's rename it first test hyphen spec.js. So this file can be a superman for you who can help you to configure, you know, a lot of other uh, things out there. So let's go ahead by uh, just to keep in mind the default uh, browser what protractor loads is uh, chrome and you choose to go ahead change the way you need it let's go ahead try doing uh, little changes i'm gonna have uh, capabilities the capabilities out there will have uh, the browser name so the browser name is uh, the browser name i want to say firefox i want to have a uh, browser called as Firefox. So it is also possible since we have come so far, just to uh, keep in mind, it is also possible for us to have a different frameworks. So by default, what happens uh, is uh, uh, Protractor tries using, what happens is Protractor tries using Jasmine. So eventually I can go ahead and change it to something else. Let's have the framework. Uh, we're not gonna make any changes. I keep it uh, as is as uh, Jasmine, but we just uh, show a placeholder that you can go ahead and change it to uh, any of your favorite uh, frameworks like Mocha or QNet and any other things which you want. Uh, the specs will tell us uh, what files we executed. They're like basic configurations which we can have. The capabilities can have a little more parameters to be given, which says that, uh, do you want this to be the headless browser or a headful browser and so on. So not with much delay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, check if uh, our first Hello World program would work. A cross check your selenium server is up and running there i have uh, two files one is first test hyphen spec.js conf.js file so let's go back and clear this console and say protractor uh, i'm sorry uh, let's say protractor protractor conf.js so let's see if this could load us the Firefox. Yes, it has loaded the browser, which is Firefox. Uh, it has gone to AngularJS and uh, Oh, it has done the job and there will be a green dot which indicates the job has been executed successfully. Right now, this could be this this file which is called conf.js can be a little more fancy as you want. You want to make this as a headless browser. You would say, hey, we don't want uh, the browser to be loaded. We want uh, uh, the test case to be executed alone by itself. So I can have a few more parameters passed uh, for Firefox. 
we have Firefox out there. And uh, let's uh, have uh, Mozilla Firefox options. Options as uh, the list of options which you want to give it. I can have a list of arcs. So let's say the arcs uh, is headless. So we're just saying Mozilla Firefox options and we want this as a headless so that uh, the, the job is still done, but the browser is not loaded. Let's go back and check. So this guy uh, loads a Selenium server and it has started. You see that the browser did not start. So at the end of it, I should still see the output either the job is done depending on the uh, um, business logic, right? So as of now, I, I just keep this on a hold and uh, go back and comment it out. So if you, you are free to explore this uh, anytime you want, I'll comment this out. So I want to see a browser which is working anytime. Now, Conf.js can be a little more tricky since we come from Firefox. Imagine that uh, you have this uh, Selenium server and say that, hey, we don't want to open this. You are free to do it. Let me press Control C on top of it. I can terminate the job. So it is as good as I have closed the terminal out there. But now, when you don't have a Selenium server and try executing Protractor, that turns out to give an error and it says that, hey, I don't see a Selenium server which is running it and the connections are refused. So in order to have uh, your Selenium, uh, in order to have your Protractor application running without having the Selenium server running, uh, we can use an additional parameter which is called as direct connect as true. So let's go back and have an additional parameter called as direct connect as true. So we don't have Selenium server running. We have passed a parameter called as direct, direct connect as true. Do you remember the direct connect true is only for Firefox or Chrome based. So other browsers, they don't work. So let's go and check. All right, so it loaded the Firefox and it works beautifully fine. And uh, it just did the job and boom, it finished. <laughs> so now uh, we just want to take uh, one step ahead of first at that spec. Imagine that we tried loading this uh, web application here. It did something here and I did not see the output. So what I can do is I can ask Protractor, hey, look at this. Can you help me to scroll this? Now I want to scroll this to a few pixels and get the job done. Yes, that's absolutely possible. Let's go back and try doing it. So this is our file, which is uh, first spec js and say hey i want to load angularjs.arc here let's say browser uh, dot execute script so i want to execute a script and this script is a javascript which i'm trying to write window dot scroll to uh, zero comma i want to scroll for about 250 pixels let's see if this goes well so and I want to close it. So let's see uh, by putting this in a practice. I want to say protractor uh, conf.js. All right, it loaded. Yeah. Oh, it, it has done it. And maybe it went really fast. I just want to increase it to like uh, 300. Plus, uh, just before we could exit, I want to give browser dot uh, sleep for like 3,500 milliseconds. So it is three and a half seconds. So let's execute for the last time so that we see the output. And uh, it should scroll. Perfectly fine. It, it does the job and finishes off. 
hope we are good with uh, example one of uh, protractor uh, let's uh, get into a little more thing where we can explore the features of uh, uh, so let's go back and uh, start writing one more application here uh, we want to create something like uh, we've got a first test spec.js let's create second test spec.js so this file we're going to do it uh, from the scratch let's have a describe block where it tries uh, accepting a input text so the, the test case here which we are planning to write is uh, back to angularjs.org where we are planning to enter the name and i want to check if that name is having uh, name uh, hello name with the exclamation that's the whole idea of having it and we're going to use uh, pretty much the same code which is visible out there so we're going to have a describe to test uh, entering uh, into an input box and we're going to have a function and let's have this function with the it it says uh, uh, executing input box text and let's have a callback function which we can write the business logic at and i want to load this page which is uh, which we can do it with uh, browser dot get with the uh, link so this it happens to be angular let me copy this and uh, put it here let's put it here and uh, if you just want to like to scroll it since we have already written i gonna go back and uh, copy this code and put it here right so i want to scroll this time not to 300 pixels so maybe 250 pixels is good so let's uh, uh have this browser.execute screen then what we want to do is we want to identify this uh, element here so you could keep a track here on this page which says uh, ng model is your name or you could right click and inspect the element uh, while inspecting it gives you the ng model as your name right <clears throat> so now we get element by model the model name is your name and i want to send uh, some keys so i just want to say harry so this guy harry's details are given to the application now we got to get the data which is uh, uh, shown on the screen that's uh, all given here so if i enter harry or if i enter naveen or uh, peter or uh, whoever it is it has got to a data binding and it should help me to get this string now every time protractor gets the string it returns as a promise so let's see what my promises are so uh, uh, protractor returns the data in the form of promise so let's get the promise i'll say i want to have variable called as return value is the element by binding so the binding is uh, if you have a look at this it's still your name so you say your name and uh, this guy where you get you can get the text part of it so it gives you an object you can get only the text part but then return the function the function will have the text which is written by protractor so let's uh, go back and uh, put this here i want to do a uh, console.log of uh, this and say uh, return value is so let's put a colon and say text right so if you want to store back to this variable so finally you've got to return the text so that the return value is stored so let's go and check by executing it uh, a couple of things you got to go back to conf.js and uh, say this guy to be executed is at first spec first test hyphen spec it will be second test 
hyphen spec so let's go and do second test spec dot js so protractor conf dot js so it loads the application human eye on the terminal it started it loads angular app and it should return me the name so what we have entered here is uh, harry we should find the written value is hello harry we have not written any uh, test as of now let's go back and try doing it right. so now the written value is something which we have got it from protractor so i'll say hey i'm expecting i'm expecting so this is more of a jasmine code I'm expecting return value dot to equal. So the equal value here, which we're expecting, given the name is Harry, I'm gonna copy this and uh, put it here. All right. So when I gave the name as Harry, it should return me hello Harry. That's one of the test cases which we want to write today. Let's go back. Let's save this and uh, check uh, protractor conf dot js. So the whole idea is to pass now because when I give Harry, it should give me the return value. All right, it has passed successfully with eight seconds. So let's go back and uh, make some changes. I want to take this exclamation mark out and see how Protractor behaves. So when I give Harry, and it should say, hello, Harry, without uh, a negation. So let's see my Protractor. So here, it loads once after loading it has to scroll a little bit about uh, 150 uh, pixels and it fails the test case fails let's start reading out the error message which is that uh, when you execute protractor confer.js it uh, started the instance of a web driver and return value is uh, hello harry but what we are expected and what we wanted is something like uh, uh, hello Harry with negation, but unfortunately we are checking that with hello Harry. So eventually your test case is failed. So that's uh, pretty much with uh, expect. So this uh, gives us an overall view of passing the test uh, and failing the test with Angular. It is also possible for us to have conf uh, js to pass a uh, uh, regular expression for example i would say hey look at this conf execute any spec just got uh, asterisk uh, meaning any uh, zero or more matching with that and hyphen spec.js let's go back and check if this works protractor conf.js let's see this so it should load for the first time, which is uh, angular uh, js.r. It has uh, loaded the first application, which is uh, done. Let's keep it aside so that we can see the console output. So it has started. It passed the first test case, uh, which we had to turn. The second one is also passed. So hope. Uh, what we had done yeah we have put a negation mark so it says that there are two specs which uh, got executed and return value is hello harry so that you you see that output the total amount of time taken is uh, 20.926 seconds so let us go ahead with uh, the second test where we have uh, uh, the speed or we have a describe and we have one test case now imagine if i want to have multiple test cases I can go back and have multiple it. So let's do this by a Angular page, which is uh, basically to 
um, enter the form. So I have a page written here. I could use this anytime. I could go to navikscom slash angular js slash form validate.html. That's the simplest form if you can have it, right? So what it does is it just does the validation. So if you just leave it empty, it says that the field is required. So you got to go back and check empty. It is required. And uh, at any point of time, if you have uh, the partial email or invalid email given, it uh, just tries throwing out to be uh, an error. It says invalid email. I'll say testing.com. So it all goes well. Let's go ahead and test this application to send some values to the server. I would select this uh, address, copy this, and go back here. So I want to enter details of employee on uh, Angular form, which is uh, a callback function, which you're going to have it. And uh, let's have uh, the browser dot get the link which we want to get today is uh, uh, the form validate. So let's start identifying the elements out there. So I can easily do it. I right click inspect element. When I inspect the element. So here it's, it has got a name. Uh, it has also got a ng model. So now I leave it to you to select uh, whatever you want. So I'm going to use ng model since this is a uh, angular application that's more preferred. So I'm going to copy this first name and go back and say uh, element by model and which happens to be first name. I want to uh, clear first. So I want to clear all the values which is there. That's for the first name and uh, you have the last name. The last name ng model is last name. Let's copy this and uh, element by model last name dot clear and the last one happens to be for email so we're going to go and check the email which is all in lowercase let's copy this and say element uh, by model email dot clear so just want to give some delay so that we can see the clear and wait for a while. We do it with uh, browser dot sleep. Uh, let's say about uh, 1000 milliseconds is good. So now I want to put some values out there. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this part. And I want to pass the first name as uh, send keys as Harry. And I want to have the last name pass Harry Shard. Right. Then I want his email to be as send keys. Let's say Harry at gmail.com. And let's uh, give a little delay so that we can see a nice output out there. I'll copy this and give some delay of like two seconds. So we loaded the page, we cleared the field. Yeah, give a sleep, that's optional for you. And uh, send the values and check. So in my contract.js, I don't want all the test case to be executed. I want to have a second test hyphen spec.js. So let's clear the console protractor conf.js. So let's see how this works. It loads the page. That's a uh, First for Angular JS, and the next one comes for the registration form. So, set times uh, when you don't want the other test case to be executed, you could just put XIT, which meaning that would be a pending test case. 
so i'll have eventually only one test case so when both of these executed it took like 17 odd seconds but now if i just go back and execute this part where uh, angularjs.arg test case is uh, uh, xit which is pending so let's see uh, how quickly it does it uh, it did pretty fast and it took close to like six seconds that's fair enough All right so that's more of a uh, angular applications so what happens uh, with protractor uh, the whole idea of having protractor is to do is to test the angular applications they work really well but now let us consider i have a page which is not an angular page which is something else in such case how do you work with that uh, i just have a web page which is uh, written which is very similar to the re uh, registration form out there which is on my web application uh, navinks.com selenium slash reg form dot html it looks pretty much the same but uh, these page, this page does not have anything to do with the angular so if i just right click and inspect an element in fact this page is not made with an angular so let's go back and check this uh, element something called as, something called as uh, email so it says uh, form control the input id is email and the type is email and i have uh, the id out there i don't have anything like ng model kind of thing let us see how to work with this let's go back uh, for visual code i create a new file which is uh, called as uh, third test hyphen spec dot js so here this file this file is to test working of a non angular web application all right so we start with uh, describe where testing uh, with non angular files which basically takes a function and i'll have a test case which is uh, testing uh, with uh, something like a regular registration form registration registration form, right so that's a whole idea of having it so let's have a function and it is also possible for us if you want to take some advantages of uh, jasmine we can have some hookup methods something like uh, before each so what my before each does is it starts invoking uh, uh, this method before each of it so I can have a callback function out there, which does some job. And uh, if you want to go uh, without function, you could even write uh, something like this. So both meaning the same. So you can either pass the function or without function. So let's do browser dot get. So we want to get this. Uh, page let me right click copy the url and paste it here so that should be fine so uh here we want to pass uh, testing registration forms we want to pass few values out there let's consider we want to give email password then confirm password so we want to pass email password confirm password so that's uh, the whole idea which we have it to send it so let's uh, go back and quickly check by inspecting each of this element i'll inspect element the first field which is uh, called email is uh, i take it by id so that's called as uh, input email so the that's the first id which you're gonna have the second one is uh, password which is called input password so we're gonna have input password the third one is confirm password uh, confirm password so it's here so likewise uh, if uh, you like you can go ahead and test it out with various fields out there so let's get started with uh, the input uh, email file input uh, my id and i want to have 
input email which is copy this and paste it here dot send keys uh, let's say the dot time at gmail.com so that's the email i want to have uh, element by id so i'll say element by id so element by id is uh, input password input password so it's got to say here as uh, send keys. Uh, I just pass it like secret at one, two, three. So that will be my password. And uh, I'm gonna have uh, the next value as confirm password. Confirm password is uh, send keys as uh, secret at one, two, three. So that's a whole uh, value which you're trying to pass it and we just want to see the output as uh, what's uh, going on uh, we can say browser dot sleep for let's consider about three seconds that's fair enough so let's go back and execute and check if things go well this file is called third test uh, spec so in my conf.js let's change this to third test spec.js and uh, it tries uh, opening firefox uh, driver directly and uh, it loads page and let's see what happens it loads page uh, and i don't see any of the field getting entered so when i go back and look at the console oh it gives me a whole lot of error let's go through and understand so if I just little scroll up, it has got a bunch of errors which has been shown out there. So this is where we started with the protractor and uh, it worked good up here and it says could not find Angular on the page. So that's something which we have to know it now. So let's make a few things clear out there. Now the whole idea of having protractor, protractor, is it has to go and uh, look for an application which is uh, having uh, something uh, with angular angular so that's how by default uh, angular js to be a little more precise so that's how the protractor is defined but the page which we have loaded the registration form does not have any event of angular what it what angular does is it goes to this page but unfortunately it does not have any angular references it waits for some time and comes back and gives an error message so that's something which is happening here now we may have to pass an additional parameter if it is a non-angular application now how do we do it let's have a look at this so i go back before each just before loading it uh, browser dot wait for angular enabled i want to pass it like false so now i say explicitly hey look at this protractor the browser when you load it you don't have to wait for angular so i explicitly say that let's go ahead and check if this works i'm going to go back clear and invoke protractor and check how it goes it should load the browser, which is Firefox in our case. And loads it. Let's see what happens. Oh, this time it entered. Once it enters, it goes and close back. And I have this test case executing successfully. That's, that's uh, where the difference between an Angular and non-Angular applications will differ. All right, so let's go back and check a couple of more examples on this page. So here I have uh, pretty much like text, 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 text. Oh, you have somebody out there who's a list box, which takes the birth date and I have a month and I also have year. So imagine that I want to automate my application. I want to enter the month or date or year uh, selecting it. So what we do is, I want to get all the months which are there in my uh, web application. I want to test 
one by one i want to test with january february march april and so on up to the end so let's go back and check what this uh, element uh, talks about let me go back and inspect an element so here i would select an element to somebody called month so i have a class which is called as form control i've got a month of uh, birth that's what the field is all about and it has got a value and it has got a display text as well so now i can get value or display text anything is good so let's go back and try getting this data and put it on uh, uh, our console so you want to get the value as well as the display text so the field name is called month of birth let me copy it so i don't have i don't feel like creating a new um, test out there so let's create a new id so let's have uh, get all the months of uh, the date of birth option or option that's good which is basically a function which should give me anything so that's my function which is month of birth so what we want is we want all the elements so now protractor provides element dot get all the elements which is there so now how do you get it you can get it by id so if you just go back and check i have id and i also need uh, the option values of this. I want the option values of this. I want to get it by by CSS. My CSS will take a couple of parameters out there. The first one is the ID. The ID is prefixed with pound, which is month of birth. And what I want is option. Now it goes there, goes to month of birth, gets the options by CSS. Then what next is then it's our callback function which is a promise which is a function it has to return all the items which are given to me so let's do this so i want to have uh, uh, i want to get both the things one is uh, month text the next one which we're going to do it for month value and we want to pass that to the uh, a web application and test it as well. So I want to get uh, the, the first thing which I'm looking for is number of items which is got. I'll say console.log number of uh, items got is uh, items.length. So this will give me the length of it. So I don't want to stop here. I just want to get all the elements which are there and display it. So let's loop it through with the help of for loop for i is equal to index value i is equal to zero i less than items dot length and uh, i plus plus so I incremented by one. I say items so any items I get I want to get the text part of it which we did in previous example then give me the text as a callback function as a promise so i would say uh, console console.log the month month is uh, the text which is written let's go and check so i just want to go back and uh, disable this for a minute so we will just uh, do x i t prefix that with x so that this goes for pending and only this case uh, will get executed. So here, let's clear this and uh, protractor con.js. All right. So it, it gives an error. Let's see why does it give text is not defined so I don't have uh, the text all right so I have missed text here because the function promises to return the text and check if things uh, go well now I'm gonna clear this and uh, invoke protractor 
and it loads it and here we go here we go so you see this is a month card the total length is 13 the first one is a blank which you've got uh, which is uh, month itself and i've got january february march april and up to december right so that's pretty cool and uh, i'm sure that by this time we would have already guessed uh, how to get the value part of it let's try doing that i'm going to copy the uh, same function out there i just copy this just put a separator and paste it out there and I want to get the value part of it. So uh, element by all, that should be good. And month text, it's not month text, it's month value is what we want to get. So if you're interested to get the number of uh, items, you can keep it, if not delete it. Now, I don't want to get the text, rather I want to get the attribute called as value then get me the text and show it so month value is this so let's see if things uh, go well uh, let's go back and execute it protractor conf.js all right so let's go back and check hey you have the month text and the month value so now what we want to do is we want to identify we want to identify the month and i want to pass the value so that my protractor should go and select some value like july or something like november or something like january right so let's go back and uh, check how to do this so here Once this test case is done, so here I want to get uh, element by ID, and we know the ID, which is uh, month of birth uh, dot element. So you want to get the element by CSS, the value which we would like to pass is something like let's say jan so which is january and finally i got to go back and do click and let's do a browser dot sleep for some time so that we could see the output out there so what we do is get the element month of birth in that look for the css look for the value which is called as jan go ahead and click it so here, here, protractor conf.js. So let's see if uh... all right. So it has selected January. That's good. So now I could just go back and change the value to something like November. So let's go back to the terminal and protractor conf.js. It's loaded and here the month is November and we have succeeded. That's perfectly fine and it has taken close to like eight seconds to do the job. So that's uh, about uh, getting started with uh, an application which is uh, non-Angular, where we can specify, uh, wait for Angular enabled is uh, false. So I just want to leave you with uh, one another concept with uh, Protractor, which is something called as action classes so one of the widely used uh, features you know in day to day is something like hover so just to do that i have an uh, uh, online store something like dasya.com so it's a 
pretty simple application. So what this, uh, uh, what we are planning to do is, I just want to hover on a, a search bar. I just hover it and I, it should really enable me to uh, place the cursor on the search bar. But when I come out, it just collapses it. I hover, it takes it. I come out, it collapses it. So I'm not gonna go and click it. The whole idea here is not to click, just to hover it. The same thing for the menu items. So you, most of our applications you would have seen, the web applications, you just have to hover it. And this hovering should uh, is something called as action classes. So let's go and check. And uh, here I have a third test stop. Let's go back and uh, create a new uh, file, which is called as for test. For test spec dot JS. So this uh, test case will have a describe, which is uh, testing for action class, which will have a callback function. So this function before each, let's do uh, before each, let's invoke a function. So my function will do browser dot get, and uh, I want to get this uh, address and paste it here, right? And we have to ensure one more line where we can take it from the previous example. If I just uh, scroll here to find uh, browser dot wait for angle enabled, I'm gonna copy this and put it here. That's uh, perfectly fine. All right, so now let's have the test case starting, which is, uh, uh, all right, searching for the product, so which is which takes a callback function where we can start writing the business logic. So, a couple of things uh, which we want to do it as a new feature. I want to have a browser and uh, I want to call driver dot manage dot window to maximize. So just to ensure that my, if I just go back to the application here, the whole idea here, I have to hover it and uh, enter something and click on search. So I, I use Firefox just to show you that uh, using, uh, you know, hovering, it will give you the X path of it. So I will go back uh, start and say Firefox. So here I get and uh, enter the application. I say tasya.com. So let me open this with the Firebug. I can right click and say inspect element with Firebug. So here I check the fire path and uh, over it here and check. So here, this is called as a search button and this is filter keyword. So this is something which you want to start with. So I'll have a search button out there and go back to this place and say it has a variable called as a element search is equal to element by ID. So the ID which we have got is a search button. And I just want to do browser dot sleep for about uh, 2,500 milliseconds so that we nice to see the output. And I just want to hover it now, not to hover. To hover, we use action classes, all right? So now let's go ahead and invoke a browser and uh, have actions. Actions, I want to have mouse move as one of the action. And I want to move the mouse to this element and I want to perform. So I just want to have this browser dot sleep kept here for like 3,500 milliseconds so that now we'll just invoke it and check. I uh, just to make a couple of things uh, clear, 
uh, we maximize uh, get the element sleep for some time just to get the user interactive here and move the mouse to that and perform the perform is a function which will actually do the job and uh, just to see the output we keep uh, ourselves sleep for three and a half uh, three thousand five hundred milliseconds now in conf we have uh, enabled direct connect now in order to have the action classes running we have to have server so all your basic operations you can pretty much do it with the direct connect but when it comes to uh, action classes it's uh, required that we will go ahead and try having the selenium server in order to do that i would have uh, the protractor works is where we are working i'll go back to command and i'm sure that uh, you know the uh, command out there which is hello world here you have the web driver manager and start so let's uh, go ahead invoke web driver manager start so this will start the server now let us go back uh, we have disabled the direct connect and we are invoking fourth test strike.js and this is where we want to invoke a protractor I'll say protractor conf.js. So it loads a page out here, which should uh, pretty much do the work. Let's see what happens. So it should, all right, it has failed. Let's see why it is failed. Uh, mouse move perform is not a function. So P E R F O R M I have missed out. Let's go ahead and check. So here it loads a browser and uh, it should pretty much uh, hover on the search bar and uh, get that. all right so it has passed so maybe like if uh, this maximize maybe the browser does not support it i'll just comment it for a while and check this once and by the way the test case is passed so now the whole idea here is we have to enter uh, some text in that text box and uh, click on that uh, search button so uh, we should pretty much uh, yeah that's what happened it, it did automatically now we have to enter the value so once it is left so enter the values in the search bar so search bar is uh, called as filter keyword i want to get the element uh, by id so now the id is uh, filter keyword dot send keys so just remember a couple of rights out there something like uh, uh, let's go back and check what we can pass first and foremost just to cross verify if we click on this this is filter keyword the filter keyword is right here so i want to click send some keys so what i do is just uh, click uh, one of the item to check i want to search here so i don't know what product we have in here I just uh, click on one of the product and uh, that should give me something like this okay so we got some nice product codes or you can take the name or whatever I'll copy this and go back and uh, I want to send the keys right here something like SKU TAS 194 and uh, what we do is finally is uh, element by id let's go and say search button i want to click so when i click it should uh, enter this value 194 and start uh, searching it let's check uh, by invoking protractor and uh, here it loads so it should uh, load the page go to the search bar 
enter the value it should pretty much uh, do the things for us so it enter and click on the search yeah we clicked on the search and here i have it right we have a complete cycle which took like 21 seconds that's perfectly fine so that's uh, a pretty much introduction to protractor and i uh, hope this has helped us so any questions leave me a comment thank you so much for watching this